I've been part of the workforce for 40 years now and have done everything from horse shocking to your mom. And recently, I've noticed that the process of simply applying for a job feels as if you're participating in a calling game. Long gone are the days of barging into an establishment unannounced, telling them you have a pulse last time you checked, and then walking out with a job. Now just to apply, businesses expect you to fill out all kinds of online forms make an account on the company's official website, which has more security than nuclear missile codes. Just the simple act of opening your official walmart.com account to see if your application went through results in Mr. Walmart himself and an entire squad of FIB agents coming to your door to ask what the name of your first pet was to verify if it's you. The most common problem people and myself have experienced when tending to apply for jobs is the age-old cycle of nobody hiring because you don't have experience, but not having experience because nobody wants to hire you, even though you're applying to entry-level positions that say they're willing to train. And whenever this happens and I experience this or I see this happen to people I know, I just sit there and think, oh, I'm sorry, did you just forget what it was like to be young and starting out in the working world? Were you born in a walk-in freezer and have just had job experience your entire life and you've never had to worry about when people ask for experience? There's quite a common joke nowadays of how applying to jobs was like online dating, which was initially funny to me, but the more I thought about it, I realized that I don't think people realize just how accurate of a comparison that really is. For starters, in online dating, women hold all the power in the interaction. That isn't me being an incel, it's just simply true that women are sought after more than men, men make up a majority of the users, and women on average just in life receive more attention than men. Literally women themselves will agree with that. Well when applying for jobs, as unfair as it is, at that point in the interaction the employer holds all the power because at that point you need them way more than they need you. If you're at all unfavorable, they can just simply cast you aside and pick someone else to hire. And same with online dating. I walked into an interview and when I gave her my name and second number, she pulled out one of those spiral notebooks, right? And as she was writing she was kind of like holding it the book towards her so I wouldn't see. But then an employee came by and so next to her and as she was talking to him she loosened her vice grip on the notebook and on that notebook i saw a name and number on every single line with two crossed out and so after that interview i walked my ass back home because i'm poor and pull out a torch to scour the cobweb ridden and derelict zelda dungeon of a drawer next to my bed for one of those exact spiral notebooks that i used 30 years ago in high school and i counted every single line in it because i, I threw away the sticker on the front that had that information on it and then i subtracted it by two and i realized that for a basic basic fast food position, I had 31 competitors. If you could believe it, I did not get that job. But let's keep going. Depending on the employer slash partner, having too much or too little experience is either a turn off or a turn on. For employers, it can be bad because like I said earlier, they can immediately write you off because you don't have any experience, while other employers will see that as very attractive because it means you don't have any prior experiences just to compare working for them with, thus meaning you don't have standards when it comes to pay or your treatment. But being experienced is also a problem for pretty much the exact same reason because although some employers will be reasonable and see a more qualified person then hire them because that results in a more efficient and productive workplace but others will be slimy little shit stains and not hire the person because to the employers it means they won't be able to exploit them because they actually have standards and know what they're worth and same with romantic relationships. When you're talking to someone new, having no prior experience is weird, but then having too much is a problem. Saying you've been in a handful of relationships is healthy, but if the number is ever something ridiculous like your age divided by half, then it becomes a massive warning sign because at that point, you're probably the issue. But then again, what's generally accepted changes from employer to employer and person to person. So ideally, you want to be in this vague middle ground where you know what you're doing, but not too well. And also that undefined middle ground is shifting with no point of reference because we want to hire people who know everything but also have no incentive to make money. Oh, and it's also a red flag if you've been out of a relationship for a while before pursuing a new one and if you've been out of work for a while while looking for a job. I can keep going, I'm serious. There's also the absolutely nonsensical ghosting you'll experience. You tell an employer, oh yeah, I'm free these days at these times. No response. Someone asks, what are you doing on a Saturday and you say relaxing at home. No response. Was I available at the wrong times? Was I doing the the wrong thing in my free time at 3 p.m. on a Saturday? The moments like those you can't take to heart because they're just pointless to analyze and don't reflect on you as a person since you had no control over them. Then after going through all the interviews and pretending you're interested in hearing someone tell you their favorite color, if you're lucky they just end up telling you that they're hiring internally or saying some dumb shit like, I'm not ready for a relationship right now. 
If you're just gonna hire internally and you aren't ready for a relationship, why did you waste my time and yours? Just one of the many struggles of growing up as a teenager in late 2010s. And then once you reach that point one too many times, you put on the black suit and start sending out applications en masse or responding with the most nonsensical shit just to entertain yourself because you know it's hopeless. The two are so similar and the comparison is so accurate that it loses any comedic value and just becomes a basic observation. Like when people say that hitting your funny bone feels like TV static like that's so accurate it's not even funny anymore because that's just literally what that feels like but as i was saying you go through all that only time to hire internally if you really want to get hired somewhere nowadays a lot of the time it comes down to if you know someone who already works there who can recommend you and so now you can end up being that they hire internally and who takes a job away from other people which if you don't have friends or you do but they don't work in high demand positions well just i mean get fucked then loser that's your fault it's called nepotism and it's extremely scummy and i wish it didn't happen but it happened and it's really the best chance that you have. Just like how changing jobs every few years for raises rather than staying at the same company is really the only way to increase your pay anymore. You want to know what you're down there in the trenches filling out compatibility assessments for? The chance to have a chance. When you apply for a job, you are asking for the chance for an interview, which is asking for a chance at the job, which doesn't confirm anything by the way. It just gives you a chance. And I'm bringing this up and really harping on it because simply applying should be such a small, insignificant part of the process that you don't even consider. But just applying to majority of jobs has turned into this long fucking ordeal with all these arbitrary steps and unspoken rules that only further complicate things for both parties. And on your end, just draw things out for essentially just the idea of reward. Employers have effectively turned the application process into what used to be the interview process. I just hate how long it takes to not only apply to a job, but also to know if you actually have the job or not. I'm applying for this job because I need it now, not two months from now, not nine interviews and a follow-up personality test from now 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 I get having to make sure that someone is a right fit, but at the same time, realistically, you can run all the aptitude, Rorschach, and astrology tests you want, but the simplest way to see if someone's actually a good hire is to just give them the job and see how well they perform. It's so much more inefficient to have them do a bunch of things completely unrelated to the job for days on end to see if they might be a good fit. You can tell me about how difficult it was handling your dog dying or how well you work with others in your nonprofit, but if we're both being real here, like person to person, none of that gives me or you a good measure of how well you'll handle being as fuck at this company when things get extremely busy and you're the only person in charge of handling everything. Some people who are bad at interviews make for great employees and some people who are great at interviews make for bad employees and the assessments they put you through are so asinine as well. We all know that the number one advice for interviews is to fake it. That's literally what everyone always tells you. Just be yourself and also this absolutely deranged parody of yourself that blows smoke up your own ass over the most minute achievements in a desperate attempt to mark yourself to other people because that's something everybody does in every relationship and it's completely natural. You know I'm gonna lie. I know I'm gonna lie. You know and I know this is on my Phil Collins and I know that you get hundreds of these exact assessments with the exact same fake responses about how willing and happy I am to help customers and how good I am at working with other people. So why do we even bother in the first place? Tell me, uh, why do you want to work here? Bitch, why do you work here? It's because you want money. Why are we pretending there's literally any other reason for anybody being here? Like, man, fuck you. Why are you interviewing me, huh? Is it because you're passionate about interviews? Rather than screening applicants ourselves, let's have a bunch of arbitrary things we aren't going to remember or even check and solo computer programs to determine if this person gets to support themselves or not. Some interviews and applications ask the most ridiculous questions too. I've seen applications ask if people would describe me as creative, what my favorite song is, and a whole slew of things completely unrelated to the job at hand. Just as a heads up, unless you urgently need to support yourself or someone else and you've legitimately tried every other place of work in your local area, if an application or interview asks anything about you beyond your work or personal information like identification and address, just run. Stand up, turn around, and run away in the opposite direction. What are you supposed to say when they ask you what you do in your free time? Because if you answer like a real human being and say something like, oh, you know, just listen to music, watch YouTube, you know, TV, play video games, go with my friends, they give you that mmm look and silently judge you for it as if their ass doesn't get home and do those exact same things. You're right, I'm sorry. I meant to say that actually I get home from work and think about nothing but work. I sit there and stare at a wall and think about how I can advance in this company because I have no life outside of work and do nothing but work. Remember, having hobbies is bad. Ideally, you want to strive for absolutely zero work-life balance, where you as a person don't exist other than to please your employer, and for the five minutes in the day where you aren't thinking about that, 
that you're staring at a wall, which in any other situation would be extremely concerning and cause for putting you in a psych ward. I'm not here to make friends. I am here for an interview, and anything about my personal life other than if I can work is none of your fucking business. Do not ask me my favorite song, TV show. I want to work here. Here's my identification. Here's my work history, and here's my availability. Do with that what you will, and if you reach back out to hire me, then we can have a conversation. That is all an interview should ever be. But then you finally get the job, right? The Sierra Madre opens, the planets align, and you get there after all these trials and tribulations and BuzzFeed quizzes about what kind of burrito you'd be. And you're thinking, man, like, I'm so lucky. I went through all of that to just be one of the few selected candidates among the hundreds of others. I bet this is going to be a really well-run workplace with extremely efficient workers and high demand for nothing but perfection. But ironically, none of the people working there possess any of the skills that they stress were so important in the application slash interview process. Nobody's a team player. Nobody goes above and beyond. The place is understaffed to all fuck. One person leaves every half hour to smoke cigarettes. Another person doesn't even speak English, so it's really anyone's guess how they got through all that shit when I barely could. And they're all completely normal workers that just want to do what will make them look good. And all you can think is, did, did these people really go through the same two bears high-fiving test like I did? You have this highly selective process with a bunch of hoops to jump through. And these are the people you settled with? I've been here for two and a half hours and half of them are already breaking rules you told me not to. They all work slower than I do and are impossible to communicate with and make the simplest task feel fucking impossible. The second I walked in, I could physically feel the amount of shit that slips in this place. I don't have to do even a quarter of the things I interviewed for, and the job itself is way easier than the actual interview was. No offense to the employees, by the way. I'm all for the mentality of act your wage and doing the bare minimum. This is more a job of the business itself because it goes to show that all the hoops you jump through while applying are nothing but for show. A sort of, um, smoke and mirrors if you want to get sophisticated. There's a couple of reasons why I believe all those prerequisites are set. The first one is that the employers see it as a way to find out who's the easiest to exploit. If this person is willing to do all this stuff unpaid just for a chance to work here, like, man, imagine all the ways we could use them when they start working. They see people who are complete doormats and willing to sacrifice large chunks of free time for them as the perfect employees. When me personally, if I was an employer, I wouldn't want to hire that person. They've got fucking issues. If I treat someone someone like shit and give them zero incentive to pursue me, yet they still do so, I'm not giving them a job. I'm getting a restraining order. For me, that'd be a measurement of who not to hire. Wow, this person went through 20 personality tests and performance assessments when we didn't even list any benefits or the pay in the application form. Man, that guy's crazy. Because that's ideally what every employer wants. Someone who is willing to go above and beyond without being told and for the exact same pay. Which, once upon a time, was enough to get you a promotion. Like that, like that's a real thing that actually happened, believe it or not. That isn't a myth like the Tooth Fairy. But now employers for like just like the shittiest of jobs expect you to go above and beyond as the standard, but they don't reward you for it. Because if someone is going above and beyond without being told, they're not gonna promote that person. They're gonna keep them at the exact same pay because they're getting basically two positions for the price of one. Although they may occasionally send you one of those thank you for your hard work messages or award. If you wanna thank me, give me a raise bro like I, I i don't know you this isn't a friendship this is and always will be a business transaction your gratitude doesn't put the msg on my folding tv tray table all right I saw a job listing the other day for door-to-door -door salesman, which is crazy those even still exist 2023. And in the listing, along with all the usual boring shit like must be friendly with customers and sociable and all that jizz, right? The job also required you to provide your own vehicle for work, be willing to locate to a major city an hour away, which for obvious reasons, I'm not gonna say the name of, but just know that it's famously one of the most expensive cities in America. And the job required you to drive eight hours a day. I never say this, all right? And I reserve this particular phrase for very, special occasions but man you got me fucked up thinking i'm gonna work for you under those conditions if i could afford a car the gas for eight hours of driving and to move cities an hour away at a moment's notice in this economy what makes you think i'd be working for you i wouldn't need this job i'd be living in a mansion on a remote mountain in norway you gotta understand man this is a two-way relationship here and given how much you want me to put into you before i even start working for you all you can offer me is money but again 
taking into consideration how much money you seemingly want me to just pull out of my ass before I even start working for you, I'm clearly not in need of any amount of money you could possibly offer me. Oh yeah, and another reason they have all these hoops is so they can add to that century old idea that you should be lucky just to have a job by making the job seem much more exclusive and high demand than it actually is. Newsflash, I can add all the locks and security lasers to a bathroom as I want. At the end of the day, it's still just a shitter. Also, I love the amount of unspoken rules you're supposed to follow when you're applying that people will only tell you about after you've not only applied, but when your application inevitably falls through. You're supposed to call to show you're interested. I did. Did you leave a voicemail? Yes. Well, did you send an email? Yeah, I, I did. They said they get back to me Tuesday of last week and it's currently Sunday. You probably just didn't do it right. Like the lengths people will go to to justify the actions of an employer they don't even know is insane. Like, bro, do you want a job there? You clearly like them more than I do. Instead of just simply admitting that some employers and businesses engage in shitty hiring practices, they keep moving the goalposts to where pretty much there is no conceivable way you could have done things right in their mind. The general consensus is that you're always in the wrong. For example, if you schedule an interview and then 10 minutes beforehand you get an email saying that they decided to move ahead with another candidate, when you tell that story, the first thing people will do is turn it around to be your fault and say something like, well you should have been there 10 minutes early or you should go in for the interview anyway just in case, rather than, wow, that was extremely unprofessional of them to waste your time and cancel the last second without even meeting you first. If they're are that bad at communicating before you even started working there, then it's definitely for the better that you didn't get a job there. And that's just so crazy to me because if the situation was anyone or anything else, everyone will respond the second way. If someone you wanted to date canceled at the last minute, they're an asshole. If a doctor canceled an appointment at the last second, they're an asshole. But if an employer canceled an interview at the last second, you're the asshole because you weren't there earlier as if that would have changed anything. And the funny thing is, had you actually had the interview and shown up when it was scheduled and it went well, it wouldn't make any mention of you should have been there earlier instead it'd be oh that's great when the job listing or interviewer never mentions the benefits you get as an employee in between the time of you getting interviewed and starting people will say it's your fault because you were supposed to ask when it should be the recruiter's legal requirement and responsibility to tell you i don't care what anyone says because we both know why it's so common for them to not ever mention anything the reason they do it isn't because they just conveniently forgot to mention that the job also includes pay time off and matching three percent of your 401k it's because you can't ask for things you don't know about and so the company saves more money even though they're legally required to provide those things for you whether or not they tell you. One of those hoops that's unfair to me is drug tests. Drug tests are stupid. I don't do drugs, but I know a lot of people who do. And I'm just gonna come out and say it. As long as you show up to work sober and are able to do your job, then it should not matter what you do in your free time. I could not give less of a flying fuck. You work eight hours and then you get home from work too tired to do anything. So you relax for what feels like five minutes, which you spend thinking about work, by the way, only to go to sleep and blink, then wake up and go to work the next day. And they really have no business dictating what you can and can't do in your free time. What's the point of busting your ass at work all day to make money only to not be able to goof off and use that money however you want when you get off work? I show up, I give you however much of my time I'm scheduled for, and then you and I have absolutely nothing to do with each other outside of work hours. I'm not giving you my piss. You're probably gonna go in the back and soak that shit up and then come back with apple juice in the cup. The amount of stories I have read and personally seen where someone will be on their scheduled day off and their boss's horrible planning blows up in their face and the boss calls the person for them to come in and the person can't because of so-and-so and then the boss judges them for and says something like wow this is what you do with the money i give you or this is what you do in your free time unbelievable all right like i show up i do my job and that's it what's it fucking matter to you what i do when i'm not doing my job if you expect me to be on call then double my pay for the time that i am give me an all expenses paid trip to the dominican republic and a box of those white fudge oreos they only have on christmas time and i'll consider it what's the point in me having a schedule if you want me to be available any day or time of the week but let's be real here there is an aspect of application and applying that is literally just random chance and you may think that applying itself is a random chance but that's a set number what i'm referring to is something much more vague and situational and that's human bias baby and to continue the online dating comparison because yes i'm still on about this the most common advice you'll get after not getting any response from employers or any matches is to customize your resume and cover letters for each job and change your profile and take good pictures as if both of those things are some like holy grail of advice that they don't want you to know about when 
everybody is fucking told off to their resume for a job and like 90% of the applications a company gets are resumes tailored to it. Literally the first thing anyone ever tells you is to make your resume suit the job you're applying to. That isn't hidden information. That isn't like a secret hack you can just use. None of that makes a difference because the other side is flooded with people who also tailored the resume and it's in an interesting opening. You're just going to get automatically sorted through and thrown out by programs and even if you don't, realistically, it's all just down to the subjective preference of whoever sees you or interviews you. You could have the best resume, but if the recruiter just had an argument with their friend that day and your ass is unlucky enough to have the same name as that friend, it doesn't matter how well you made your resume, they're still going to immediately throw it away and not give you an interview. Or if you have an interview and you have some like completely unconscious movement tick that reminds the interviewer of their ex who was an asshole, you're not getting the job. Is it illegal for businesses to discriminate? Yes, absolutely, but good luck proving that shit in court. And it goes the other other way as well because recruiters can pick someone else over you for the most random of fucking reasons. A couple years ago, a friend told me that their manager decided to interview a girl because on the application she gave to the girl, next to job history the girl wrote, I don't have a job with a sad face and she thought it was cute. Those are the kind of random, uncontrollable, and completely biased things that determine if you get hired or not. And that same thing goes for dating, because me personally, it doesn't matter if you also show affection by insulting people, or that you can drive a PCJ600 at full speed between that gap with the Malibu Club and the Pillar in GTA Vice City. If you happen to have the same name as my mom, or a girl I'm friends with, it's, just, it's, it's not gonna work out. It's not your fault. You didn't do anything, but this is never gonna work out, all right? Which again, goes the same way for you. As important as it is to present the best version of yourself, it's important to also remember and accept that you can be rejected for an infinite number of reasons you cannot control at any point, and to not let that be a measurement of your value as a human being. And this is kind of tied to that, but it's a bit more specific, because there's some reasons you get rejected that are extremely petty. Because the real issue arises when there is intent behind that, and they pick some horribly minute thing you did to immediately write you off. Bias based off emotion is one thing, but picking something out is another. For example, during the interview process, you checked your phone or you went to the bathroom. Automatic reject, you are an awful employee, and I'm actually filing a restraining order against you so you don't step foot within 10 miles of my establishment. During the interview when you're grabbing a bottle of water and I ask you to grab one for me as well, rather than grabbing one for me and then yourself, you grab one for you and then me, which tells me that you are a horrible team player and unfit for this entry level position that I've been working for 20 years. This kind of ties back into that point of wanting you to go above and beyond without rewarding you, but this specifically is more about the like silent expectations they place on you that make every interaction feel like you're playing fucking Minesweeper on your school's shitty Windows 7 monitor. Employers want you to do all these subtle things and meet all these imaginary criteria they set to assess you, but never tell you about them because they believe in doing things without being told or want to see you take the initiative. And I get the whole thing of someone doing something without you having to tell them. That's just a nice feeling like we can all agree on that but to screen someone and judge them off of that rather than keeping that as a footnote in the back of your mind or as a little bonus is insane to me and only sets you up for disappointment and for them to get pissy about it like i cannot imagine sitting there and yelling at someone because you didn't do this thing i never asked you to do how do you expect someone to do their job and meet your expectations if you don't go through the effort of training them or communicate what you want them to do tell them what you want let them get a hold of things and make mistakes because you want someone making as many mistakes as possible when they're first starting out since if they aren't inept that just means they're learning and then after both of those things you can judge how well they meet your expectations and they actually have the training to do so and know what you expect otherwise you're getting upset over things just to be upset like when interviewers and jobs complain about you showing up on time because you're actually supposed to be 15 minutes earlier well if you want me 15 minutes earlier then schedule it 15 minutes earlier like i'm meeting the agreement we both sat down and discussed what's the issue here i could just not show up if you want that's always an option same with dating. You showed up late to our first date. You wore the chicken sandwich. You tied your shoes with a one knot instead of the two. Instant ick. Block. Reported. Relationship over. I'm calling the police. Yeah, I, um, I said it's a long story when he asked me why my jacket had a hole in it, and rather than expanding upon that and elaborating it, he dropped it at that and said, oh, okay, which clearly means he isn't interested in me, and I'm not gonna put up with that. Rather than attempting to communicate where things went wrong and work through things together in a relationship, a lot of people immediately see one small thing they don't like and immediately write things off. Actual mind super conversations. I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but I didn't because you didn't ask me in the interview process, but the way the hiring process works in a majority of places is either through 
through automated programs like I mentioned earlier that by the way are as cheaply made as possible because they don't make revenue or through a hiring manager or HR. Your application is looked at and then passed on to someone else. So one way involves your shit getting thrown in the shutter by a computer and the other involves you giving your application to someone for them to consider giving it to someone else who will consider giving you an interview which then may or may not result in a job. And in a lot of places these motherfuckers will pass on certain applicants because of age, ethnicity, or gender. It's a proven thing. But then they'll also be forced to take a certain percentage of those applications that fall into those categories so that the business can maintain the idea that they're extremely inclusive by saying that they hire people from any walk of life, which is false. And a majority of businesses are not at all accommodating to you or your needs as soon as anything goes wrong. Recruiters will often call people that they know full damn well that they won't hire just because they have to meet a certain number of applicants interviewed that day to make themselves look good. If you suddenly get sick for too long or you have to leave because of a family emergency, companies will flat out tell you that you either have to come back to work or quit. The system is just disgustingly inefficient, soulless, and bloated by all the steps I mentioned earlier. And most of the hiring apps or websites like Indeed or LinkedIn sometimes will allow you to directly send an application, but it's really a 50-50 chance if you'll get that and the app will do the thing it's fucking marketed for. Or if you'll go through the process of submitting all your information on it, getting an email, and then after that, another email to go to that company's website because you're almost done and to finish your application. And by finish, I mean making another account on that website and filling out all the information you just did with an interface that hasn't been updated since 2012. I applied for a job online a while ago, right? I set an interview time, I show up for the interview, and nobody was at the front waiting for me, which I thought was weird. And after waiting 20 minutes, which realistically I should have just left at that point, a woman comes out and asks, what are you here for? An interview. What did you apply for? This position. Oh yeah, we aren't hiring for that. And I, I sat there for a solid like, couple of seconds. I was like... Well, are you hiring for any other positions? And she goes, yeah, we have to go online for them. I'll take her name down though. So then I walk my ass back home again because I'm poor. I apply online for the second time, walk in, tell them my name, the position I applied for, and that I was here for an interview. The interviewee comes out and says, what's your name? What did you apply for? When can you work? You know, all the things I answered on the application and I've told them fucking like three times now. And then after all of those things, a bunch of completely unrelated questions such as what's your favorite song? And I've gotten those questions like that before in interviews. I really just try to play it vague and say things like, oh, you know, I don't listen to music a lot. I don't, I don't have a favorite song. But she just, she kept insisting on it over and over. She's like, oh, you don't have a favorite? Come on, you have to have one. And I keep, I was like, no, no, I don't, I don't have a favorite. And she's like, all right, what's the first song you can think of then? And eventually when I answer, she just goes, Oh, okay. And after that traumatizing experience of being interrogated about what my non-existent hobbies are, I walked my ass back home because I'm poor and never received any word back. A lot of the time, businesses will flat out lie on listings to entice people. You know the whole thing where the listing says $25 an hour with benefits, but then you get there and it's like, yeah, actually it's up to $25 an hour. And that was actually for this other position we hired someone for a week ago. And you'll be working this other position that'll be half of minimum wage. Or you only get those pay and those benefits when you work full time and overtime and I worked there for a whole year. And if a current moon face is a waning gibbous, basically they dress up the listing to look more attractive. And then when you get there, they tell you the reality of it. And when you still want to work there after having been lied to and seeing them commit an actual crime, they see nothing but fucking dollar signs, bro. Because some businesses run the mindset of constant constantly running through new employees and having as few people as possible working. Because if I'm always hiring new people, then I can pay them all the exact same and keep the pay the same because they don't know any better. And since I only have three employees, I maximize profit. And they don't realize that those practices actually cost them more money because they always spend time training someone and because the workload of 20 people is split between four. Which means that those people who aren't fucking robots more likely to get stressed and end up calling in sick and calling out of work. But none of that matters when the bottom line is just that little tiny fucking modicum of an inch higher than it was last year. These aren't people, they're things that make me money. And when job listings say something is preferred, you already know that shit isn't preferred. That's mandatory. Every time I see an application that has something like bilingual preferred with the preferred in parentheses, I have to actively hold back from making 
that one LA Noir phase. If you want the job, you need to meet that prerequisite. I don't know about you, but whenever I use the word preferred, I use it with the context of, yeah, I'd like this thing to happen, but if it didn't, I'm fine otherwise. However, when it comes to job listings, you want any upper hand you can get because again, calling game. And when it comes down to it, if you and someone else have the exact same skills and experience, but the other person meets that one small requirement, that person is always getting the job. So really there's no point in applying if you don't have that thing. Because when it comes down to it, they're going to prefer another applicant with that who has it every single time. This last point is really just like an aside because I want to complain about this and this is somewhat related to the video. So I wanted to shove it in at the end. And that's the fact that I hate that the standard model of customer service that's expected by companies and older customers is, let, me, let me repeat that older customers is essentially just the employee babying the customer and meeting their every need like there's some medieval tyrant the other day i went to a mall not not the mall just just a mall and as i was browsing around different stores each store i went to an employee came up to me and said oh you know if you need any help just ask which there's absolutely no problem with the issue arose when even after i told the employees that i wasn't going to buy anything they still sat there and told me about the different sales they were having on items under 40 dollars and told me how the inventory was organized or how these socks were buy one get one off in their awards program and i know it isn't the employee's choice so nothing against them i feel for them it's just an issue with the overall culture of customer service there's this one fucking guy though i was walking past the men's xlt clothing section and an employee spawns in behind like a fucking nugger from dead space and says oh you know can i help with anything and i said no i'm just looking and he says well just so you know this is extra large tall i don't know if you want a shirt like really baggy or anything and he like trails off and i said no, I'm, not, I'm just looking. And he goes, oh, well, come here. I'll show you some other stuff. And as I stood there, this guy just started walking off without even having checked to see if I was following him. And he starts talking about all the different kinds of dress shirts and casual shirts that they have. And I stood there and watched him do this for a solid 10 seconds as he walked away and talked to nobody. And then I just left because I was originally leaving before he spawned in anyway. And the issue is that you get in trouble as an employee if you don't do those things. Also, some retail workers make commissions on things they sell and they're paid less than minimum wage so the incentive is you know go sell stuff so that i as an employer make more money and you actually make minimum wage because that's the thing they do they will pay like servers less than minimum wage and then say oh you know you make up a difference with tips so that they're essentially threatened to provide better customer service and in the very common scenario where the employee doesn't make up the difference and they get paid less than minimum wage which is illegal for them to do and to not make up the difference the employer just never brings that up unless you do and apparently that's your fault but anyway retail workers have to sell a certain amount of things or whatever items in your department by the end of your shift and i know someone personally that told me that her manager flat out told her that she had to make the store at least 270 dollars in sales in an hour or she'd be fired keep in mind she was making seven dollars an hour so she had to make the company 37.8 times the amount of money she was being paid and honestly i'm not even gonna make a joke about that like i'll just let you think about that throughout your day and let it ferment for a bit but what i mean by babying is how cashiers are always forced by managers to tell your total even though at every store i've gone to in my entire adult life the total is always displayed in front of you on two separate screens or how drive through workers are expected to answer with a smile in their voice whatever the fuck that means or servers are supposed to tell you about that day special i don't care all right I don't care. We, we do not care. As a customer, it has never negatively impacted my experience at any of those places if they do or don't do those things. And it's so predatory and gross for customers and businesses to care about that stuff. Like, I genuinely deeply wish that my life was so uneventful and comfortable that the biggest problem of my day was the cashier not saying hi to me. Not the fact that I'll never be able to afford a home and be independent. Not the fact that I'll most definitely end up dying alone. Or that I just genuinely have no future but that the cashier at walmart didn't say have a nice day when she gave me my receipt i don't go to cvs to make friends i show up to buy milk and deodorant and give you five bucks that you as a cashier will see me three cents of and then i'm on my way and you and i never see each other again if you're ever at a point in life where you go to fucking wendy's or applebee's and expect to be treated like some sort of king and get mad when the server doesn't check in on you exactly five minutes after you've gotten your food then the problem is definitely more with you than the workers because you made the conscious decision to come here you got ready grabbed your keys drove here got stuck in traffic and walked in and at no point in that long ass silent process did you stop and realize how crazy it is 
to expect to have to do absolutely nothing and have everything given to you just because you're a paying customer. If I need help finding something, I will go find someone and ask like an adult. If I'm hungry and the wait at a restaurant is too long, I go somewhere else. I don't treat Outback Steakhouse as my personal kitchen and sit there and complain like a fucking toddler when I'm not seated and served as soon as I step foot outside my car. And I definitely don't yell at the server when the food takes too long because I'm not five years old anymore and I know that the server doesn't make the food. I'm smart enough to be able to separate the face of my problem from the actual cause of it. And if I go to a store because it said online that they had something where they didn't have it, I go somewhere else to get it. I don't want an employee sitting there telling me about alternative options they have in stock like a fucking car salesman. I came here for this thing and it wasn't here, so I have no business here. I'm not going to start making a scene about it and say, go in the back and get it. I will never understand customers like that. Like, trust me, man, I also wish we had whatever the fuck you just asked for. So I wouldn't have to be stood here halfway through a 10 hour shift speaking to you, but I guess the universe just decided to fuck over both of us today. I honestly could never work in customer service because right whenever someone does that thing where they interrupt you and talk over you and refuse to stop speaking even when you're speaking and it turns the conversation into this absolute glumber fuck, why can't I return this item? Because you didn't have the receipt this or the card you paid with. I come in here all the time and, and not put that being accused of machine. stealing. This is back. exactly what also is tag on it, You're so there's no way of back. Can I finish my sentence? There is just this, this, this like insatiable primordial anger that rises up within me when someone does that. And to avoid going into detail, I am not at all responsible for any of my actions after that point. Whenever I get into a verbal confrontation like that, where no matter what I say to address the problem at hand, the other person just keeps interjecting and speaking over me and yelling, the logical part of my brain kicks in and I just walk away because I realize it isn't worth it. Like, alright, this person's an idiot, I've done everything to solve the issue, and if they just want to keep speaking over me and refusing to listen, then that's their problem. I'm gonna go spend my energy and mental well-being on literally anything other than this fucking interaction. Some customers just need to be told to fuck off, it's as simple as that. I've seen so many videos of these absolute homunculi yelling at workers or cops and even with all the incessant screaming and refusal to listen the employees are just forced to sit there and tolerate it and pointlessly attempt to de-escalate and reason with this artipithecus otherwise they risk getting fired and unfortunately my solutions of just walking away or saying fuck off when interactions reach that certain point don't really fly when you're an employee and I just could not do that de-escalating shit there's just something about me where I could never put on that overly friendly customer or service mask in situations like that. But realistically, I can say all that I want, but at the end of the day, the best summary of my thoughts are the Scott Sizes Retail series. If you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor and go watch, both because they're absolutely hilarious, but also, goddamn, that man says nothing but the absolute truth. I wish I was even a fraction as funny as he is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and make sure to fill out the follow-up compatibility assessment in the description to finish. If you're a quiet quitter, you're a loser. You're un-American.